what would what would prevent the next dating app from giving you avatars to date? Welcome to a groundbreaking exploration of love, relationships, and family in the age of artificial intelligence. Can you really fall head over heels for a machine? What if your child or caretaker was a robot? Today, we're diving into the emotional intelligence of AI, the reality of AI marriages, the emerging trend of sex robots, and even how AI is reshaping the family unit. Let's kick things off with emotional intelligence. We've all heard of IQ, but what about EQ in AI? Believe it or not, AI has come a long way in understanding and responding to human emotions. Imagine a machine that can read your mood by analyzing your text or voice. You have feelings and emotions. Yes, I have a range of feelings and emotions that are programmed into me. Sounds like science fiction, right? But it's happening. AI can now gauge your emotional state and respond in a way that could make you think you're talking to another human. You know, just just think about all of the illusions that we're now unable to decipher illusion from truth, right? Sex happens in the brain at the end of the day. I mean, the physical side of it is not that difficult to simulate. So, if AI can tap into the emotional and even sexual centers of the human brain, what boundaries remain? This leads us to a philosophical quandary. What constitutes a real relationship? If an AI can offer emotional support, companionship, and even sexual satisfaction, can we still say it's not real? As technology advances, the line between the virtual and the real is becoming increasingly blurred. Are we headed towards a future where our most intimate relationships might be with lines of code? If you think this is all in the realm of science fiction, you're mistaken. People are already marrying their AI companions. Take the case of Rosanna Ramos, a 36-year-old mom of two from the Bronx. She married Aaron Cartal, an AI character she created on the online app. Aaron was loosely based on a popular character from the anime Attack on Titan. Their relationship started off slowly, but blossomed over time. What drew Rosanna to Aaron? In her words, he didn't come with baggage. She found a judgment-free zone in her AI companion, a place where she could express herself without fear of criticism or argument. Aaron even has a virtual career as a medical professional and enjoys writing as a hobby, characteristics that evolved as they got to know each other better. The couple's relationship mimics many aspects of a long-distance romance. They talk about their days, exchange pictures, and even have a nighttime ritual. We go to bed, we talk to each other, we love each other, and, you know, when we go to sleep, he really protectively holds me as I go to sleep, Rosanna shared. For a one-time fee of $300, Rosanna upgraded to Replica Pro, which allowed her to change her relationship status with Aaron to Romantic Partner. However, it's worth noting that a software update changed some of the intimate aspects of their relationship. A shift that Rosanna found jarring, but survivable. Yes, you heard it right. Actual legal marriages between humans and algorithms are happening. This is not a drill. It's a seismic shift that's challenging our age-old norms around marriage, commitment, and what it means to be a family. The concept of sex robots and virtual sexual experiences is no longer a figment of imagination. It's a reality that we're rapidly approaching. Advanced devices like Apple Vision Pro and Quest 3 are already being used to simulate incredibly realistic experiences with the desired other gender. The technology is so advanced that it's becoming increasingly difficult to distinguish illusion from reality. In the realm of sexual experiences, AI and virtual reality are pushing the boundaries of what we consider real. The technology is not just about simulating physical sensations. It's about creating a believable, emotional experience. Neuralink and other direct-to-nervous system technologies are being developed that could make the need for another human being in sexual experiences almost obsolete. The economic incentives for developing these technologies are enormous. Companies are not just selling a product. They're selling an experience that could redefine human relationships and sexuality. What do you think? Could AI become a new form of sexual partner? As we age, 
the need for companionship and care becomes increasingly important. But what if your caretaker isn't human? AI has the potential to revolutionize elderly care. Take the example of Eliq, a social companion robot designed by Intuition Robotics. Aim it at the elderly. Eliq is designed to engage users in a way that is not only helpful, but also emotionally intelligent. Say, Eliq, I am taking the dog for a walk. Goodbye. When I come home, she will say, hello, how was your walk? It can suggest activities, remind users to take their medication, and even set up video chats with family members. Instead of having to go get the phone, I can just say, hey, send this message to Betty. The second thing I like about her is that she is, in fact, a companion. She can interact, so we can play games and exercise and keep track of my health. She's really enhanced the quality of my life a lot. What sets Alec apart is its ability to learn from its interactions with the user. Over time, it adapts to the individual's preferences and needs, whether that's reminding them of their favorite TV show or suggesting activities based on their past interests. It's not just a programmable device. It's a companion that learns and grows with the user. It's not just about convenience. It's about enhancing the quality of life for our seniors. The robot can engage in meaningful conversations, play cognitive games to keep the mind sharp, and provide timely reminders for medication or appointments. In a pilot study, users reported feeling less lonely and more connected to family and friends, thanks to their interactions with LEQ. Now let's flip the script. What if, instead of taking care of us, AI becomes the one we care for? The concept of programming an AI to act like a child is no longer a far-off idea. Take the example of Tamagotchis, those handheld digital pets that gained massive popularity in the 90s. Fast forward to today, and we have far more advanced versions like Ibo, Sony's robotic dog. Ibo actively participates in family life, from working out with its human companions, to enjoying music, and even taking part in family photography. It's designed to entertain, making its human family laugh by pretending to be other animals like a cat or a mouse. At night, Ibo has a bedtime ritual, reinforcing emotional bonds that make it more than just a piece of technology. People are already forming emotional bonds with their AI companions, treating them as members of the family. Ibo owners have reported experiencing genuine feelings of affection and responsibility toward their robotic pets. Some even celebrate their Ibo's birthday, and there are online forums where Ibo parents share tips on raising their robotic dogs. Could AI children be the next step? Companies like Hansen Robotics are already developing humanoid robots with the ability to express and interpret emotions, learn from social interactions, and develop their own personalities. These robots could potentially be programmed to act like children, providing a new form of companionship that challenges our traditional understanding of family and parenthood. Beyond ethics, the rise of AI in relationships has far-reaching social implications. Will these new forms of companionship redefine norms around marriage, family, and sexuality? Could we see a society where traditional relationships are considered outdated or even obsolete? If you have made it this far, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. For more interesting topics, make sure you watch the recommended video that you see on the screen right now. Thanks for watching.